Hello, everyone. My name is Victor Monga. I work for VMware based out of Palo Alto, California. Hey, Victor. I'm Harrison Graydon. I also work for VMware. One of the exciting new security features with the NSXT 3.1 release is the Jump to Application option for environment policy. This new feature will be the topic covered in this presentation. Working towards micro-segmentation is a journey. Voyage to the land of zero trust. As customers embark on their security adventure, they often don't know what policy is needed for each application. Even application owners are sometimes not aware of all requisites and connections for the application. Tools like VRealize Network Insight and NSX Intelligence can help identify required flows and required security rules. But this takes time. So most customers start creating policy around broader zones like environments, sites, clusters or pods. We call this macro segmentation. To continue with the journey motif, macro segmentation is like establishing your cardinal directions, east, west, north, and south. Once you have a clear understanding of the where, the what of your environment, the journey can truly begin. Likewise, by isolating large chunks of the data center into these more manageable and secure zones, we can begin working to the more granular application-specific policy. In this presentation, we have distinct Harry Potter houses that represent designated zones. None of these houses should be talking to each other. So, we can macro-segment our environment by building policy around these large houses. From there, we can use the jump to application action to ensure that our more precise policy is also applied. First, let's introduce the concept of software-defined networking and security. Without software-defined networking and distributed firewall services, virtual workloads have a rather inconvenient path for security. As you can see on the slide here, traffic between L3 domains, even when the workloads are on the same host or hypervisor, would need to always be redirected to the perimeter firewall to ensure that security policy is being applied for the traffic in question. So we would go from the hypervisor to the switch, then to the router, and finally to the perimeter firewall, just to verify that the traffic is legitimate and permitted. And then from there, we would need to follow a similar path back down to reach the destination VM, as you can see here. Uh, and this VM is sitting on the same host as our source. Thus, a single packet between VMs on the same host must pass through six different hops before finally being delivered. This is clearly not the most ideal traffic pattern for workloads that exist on the same physical box, or even if the workloads were on different boxes, the number of hops would still be the same. Let's suppose that the traffic is not legitimate and needs to be blocked. Well, this potentially threatening traffic would traverse the physical fabric before finally being blocked by the perimeter firewall. From a security perspective, we want to isolate potential threats as quickly as possible and block traffic as close to the source as possible. Without software-defined networking and security functions, this is not possible, and nefarious traffic can move laterally throughout the data center without being appropriately vetted by a perimeter security device. And here is what the traffic flow looks like with software-defined networking using VMware NSX. We can implement virtual networking and security functions to optimize traffic path between workloads. So in this case, connectivity and security policy are delivered at the hypervisor layer. So when the VM on the left needs to talk to the VM on the right, traffic can be inspected for legitimacy and passed directly to the destination VM, eliminating the physical hop for the most efficient traffic path. We have reduced a six hop traffic path to zero. Now, there are two primary functions of NSX. You could do a whole lot with NSX, but they both or most of those functions are categorized under bigger categories as networking and security. They can be leveraged together or independently, but both form the crux of the NSX solution. So our focus here is mostly concerned with security aspect. Harrison, can I start security segmentation without software-defined networking? Absolutely, Victor. Uh, you could provide security policy without using the NSX overlay. Uh, you could place workloads on VLAN-backed networks instead and implement a firewall at the workload layer uh, without having the overlay-backed networking in place. So there is the option to only choose a security segmentation track with NSX. So for the security function, the goal though is always zero trust. As we mentioned earlier, policy definition is a process or a journey though. 
so we start with a wide range of objects. That's macro segmentation. And whittle our way down to individual workloads or tiers within individual applications, what we refer to as micro segmentation. Both approaches can be used to successfully administer security policy for your virtual data center. Certainly, micro segmentation is the preferred destination or goal, but macro segmentation can effectively deliver broad security guardrails in a short amount of time, and it's commonly the first step that users go to. Let's look at a common use case for macro segmentation. We've got an organization named Talking Trees. Talk to Trees? Talking Tree has 20 different business units, and there's no strict network segmentation implemented here. So CISO has looked at the compliance requirements and there's a new CISO initiative to prevent access between departments, but still allow them to connect to shared services like Active Directory, DNS, DHCP, Syslog, NTP, etc. This is a very common macro segmentation use case that NSX satisfies. So each of these departments are essentially different tenants. You know, you, you've got R&D, finance, call center, IT, manufacturing, shipping. As examples here, you know, you might have HR. Uh, all of these are, are different tenants for, for your infrastructure, right? So we can logically separate the workloads used by each of these departments. Uh, to get started, you do need to have some idea of which workloads are used by a particular department. Uh, and then from there, you can use NSX grouping to isolate the workloads based on the department. Uh, tagging and naming conventions can be helpful here in managing the workloads and the applications associated with particular groups or tenants. We talked about the problem. So if I am a CISO and if I'm or I'm sitting in a CISO office, I'm considering this solution. Requirements for that solution I would highlight is going to be, I want to have a solution where I can have firewall policies regardless of an IP address. I would also like to enforce my firewall policies at the source virtual network interface card. So as Harrison brought up this point earlier, then why do we have to wait for about four to six hops before we get that decision? Allow or block? Why can't we have that on the source level? So this would be another requirement for my macro segmentation solution. And the last is I wanna have this dynamic and automatic. So for example, if I have three web servers today and I have a network policy or a macro segmentation policy, and tomorrow during my Christmas period, the demand of web servers increases and if now I have 10 web servers, I would like to have network macro segmentation policies enforced automatically so that I don't have to go and look at the IP addresses, change firewall policies, none of that. It should be automatic, it should be dynamic. So Edison, tell us how we can justify and satisfy all of these requirements using one of the solutions. Sure, uh, so you know, you, what you can do is you can group uh, these workloads around those different tenants like we were talking about. So here you can see we've got R&D, finance, call center as sort of different tenants uh, within the data center. Um, they have shared services that they all need to access. So they would all have access to um, uh, those particular services like AD and, and DNS and NTP and such. But uh, between the different departments, you can see we've isolated um, them so that they can't talk to each other. So one of the things that we would do is, is group um, all the R&D workloads with an R&D tag, for instance. Uh, or maybe there's a certain naming convention that the workloads have that includes R&D. That's another way that you can group. So uh, you can use um, uh, the naming conventions and tagging workloads to get that dynamic uh, membership criteria that you're looking for, and it wouldn't be based on IP, right? Because we're doing this around departments. So um, what we've done here, as you can see, we've, we've precluded connectivity between the tenants here, uh, but have allowed access to all the shared services from all of them. And that's what we call macro segmentation. Tenant level isolation is macro segmentation. And that tenant doesn't have to be a, an outsider it could be your own business unit. It could be an application. So consider tenant level isolation as macro segmentation. While within a single tenant, we can implement micro segmentation. How might this look in NSXT, you may ask? Well, 
VMware NSXT has several categories of rules that you can see here, Ethernet, Emergency, Infrastructure, Environment, and Application. These also represent an order to the forward rule set. So Ethernet rules are the first to be hit followed by Emergency, Infrastructure, and so on. Ethernet rules are for layer two. Emergency rules are intended for immediate remediation of a dire situation or for quarantine while under attack. In starting with the infrastructure category, we move on from broader, more global rules to more granular rules in the application section. So you'll put your rules for common services in the infrastructure category with the expectation that the entire data center will need access to those resources. And then we have our environment categories and our application policy categories as well. Um, and as Victor stated, the distributed firewall operates in a top to down, top to bottom fashion as, as most traditional firewalls do. Uh, thus rules at the top of the rule set are examined first and then the examination continues down the rule set until a match for the traffic is found. NSXT has these predefined categories for firewall rules that we have here on the slide and that Victor was describing uh, that also represent that top-down ordering. A Ethernet first, emergency, infrastructure, environment, and application. Ethernet rule is gonna sit at the top of the rule set um, and be applied first while your application rules will be on the bottom. Uh, the data plane is not really aware of these categories that we have here on the management plane. It's not aware of whether a rule is an emergency rule or an infrastructure rule or an environment rule or, or whatever. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't care about that, but it does care about the order. Um, so it does respect the, the, that order. Um, and all environment rules are automatically going to come before application rules. They're just gonna get a, uh, a, a lower uh, number uh, on the rule set and therefore be applied first. So these firewall rule categories um, are management constructs that simultaneously represent a real order of rules on the data plane. How about the environment and the application section? The difference between these categories is likewise the difference between macro segmentation and micro segmentation. In the environment section, we are isolating between broad zones or departments. While in the application section, we isolate at a much deeper level between applications or within the application itself. Micro segmentation is a great way to get started when implementing policy in NSXT. True micro segmentation can take time to build, to implement, and to develop sustainable processes to support it for the long term. Now, it is certainly the ultimate goal for a mature security posture. But with the macro approach, you can forge a virtual distributed security policy that attains a decent level of segmentation for your data center. So before NSXT 3.1 and the new jump to application feature, uh, we were unable to apply policy to a flow in both the environment and the application categories. In fact, uh, most customers would just place everything in the application category and and not really use these categories as intended uh, because the rule, the DFW rule set works in a top to bottom fashion and because environment rules are matched prior to application rule, and that's because environment rules sit higher in the rule set. Uh, our environment rule matching a particular flow is going to get hit first and then immediately exit whether the action is an allow or a drop. So the packet simply travels vertically until it finds a single match in the rule set. So say that we have a broad rule in the environment category and then a more specific rule defined in the application section. In NSXT versions prior to 3.1, the flow in question will never hit the more specific rule because it's gonna already hit the rule in the environment section. You know, potentially traffic that should or is expected to be dropped will instead be allowed to pass. Packet's just gonna travel vertically down the rule set until it finds a single match. And then whatever that action is, the, the packet's going to do. Now in this example, there are no environment rules. So all policy is defined in application category, thus the flow hits a single rule in the application category and exits. Again, prior to NSXT 3.1, the flow exits the rule set as soon as the first matching rule is found. 
In this case, the first rule is in the application category. You cannot have two distinct policies in the environment and application category applied to the same flow in NSXT 3.0 and below. Now let's see what we can do with policy in NSXT 3.1 with the jump to application feature. We have a macro segmentation policy applied in the environment category, painting a broad stroke of policy over the data center. As you can see in this example, we have segmented the environment into tenants. Tenant 1, Tenant 2, and Tenant 3. These are inter-tenant rules. In the application category, we still reference our isolated tenants, but the policy goes deeper. Here we have intra-application or intra-tenant rules. So let's take a look at a flow for Tenant 2. In NSXT 3.1, we can have a rule in the environment category that broadly matches traffic for tenant two, for all traffic for tenant two. And then after matching that rule in the environment section, the flow will then jump to the application category and match a second, more specific rule that is intra-tenant, right? In 3.1 though, then rules can be organized to ensure that flows must match two rules before being explicitly allowed or dropped. This gives us greater defense in depth since we have both broad policy surrounding the environment and then more precise policy after the first condition has been met. Let's take a look at an example here. Here, the flow will be matched to two rules, the first in the environment section and then the explicit allow rule in the application section. The flow in question here is from the Slytherin web server to the Slytherin application server. The first rule we match is in the environment category rule for the Slytherin house generally. So you can see that here, you've got Slytherin house all as the source, Slytherin house all as the destination as well. This is a group that contains all the workloads that are within the Slytherin house. And we have uh, the service as any, and then of course the action, as you can see, is, is jump to application. Now, because the action is jump to application in this first rule, the packet's then going to migrate and jump over to the application category of the rule set and hit the more particular policy for the Slytherin house here, which is tenant two. And then it's going to match the rule in the application category here that we have for this flow, which is Slytherin web server to Slytherin app server over HTTP and HTTPS allow. And so this, this flow is actually gonna be allowed, but we match two rules to ensure that that flow is allowed. So instead of just moving vertically down the rule set, in NSXT 3.1, we move both vertically and horizontally. This ensures a more efficient traffic flow since traffic will not need to be matched with all the environment rules before jumping over to the application category. So once it hits this environment rule in tenant two, it doesn't go down to tenant three or tenant four or tenant five. It jumps immediately over to the application category part of this rule. So you actually have fewer rules that uh, the flow is needing to be measured against. I wanna show you what we have set up a lab here. Uh, you can see that we have three Harry Potter houses, each with their own individual application policy rule set. And these are gonna be our macro zones. So uh, we've got Slytherin house, we've got Hufflepuff house, and we've got Gryffindor house. These are our tenants, right? Our zones, domains, however you wanna call it that we are implementing macro segmentation. Now, in the beginning, I talked about that the requirements for macro segmentation based on CISO's initiative, Harrison is gonna show us how that can be achieved using VMware NSXT. So the first requirement, we talked about that each tenant or each department should not be able to communicate with each other. He's gonna show how Harry Potter houses in our demo will not be communicating with each other. Then the second, we talked about that each house can communicate with a shared service like ADD, CP, DNS, NTP, syslog, etc. He's gonna show us that each house are communicating with a machine called Hogwarts, and that could be shared services. And at the last, he's gonna show us if there's a one department who has special needs to access a specific servers. It could be for machine learning, or it could be for artificial intelligence. It could be for BI reporting. How one of our houses called Gryffindor House is communicating to Dumbledore virtual machine. So in this demo, Harrison is gonna actually show us all of these requirements are justified, satisfied, and completed using VM at NSXT. Right, so here's a visual representation of, of what Victor just stated. Uh, we want to prevent uh, traffic flows between the different domains here, between the different houses. So Slytherin House should not talk to Hufflepuff House. 
Slytherin house should not be able to talk to Gryffindor. Uh, Hufflepuff should not be able to talk to either of the other houses. Gryffindor the same way. Gryffindor does have that special allowance to talk to Dumbledore. And then, of course, all the houses are going to need to be able to talk to common service. We'll, we'll show what that looks like. You know, we also want to make general rules to allow traffic within each house, right? So uh, this is kind of how we're going to achieve this, actually. And this is kind of the beauty of this jump to application feature in NSX T3.1 is that you can create positive uh, policy instead of negative policy. So instead of just simply preventing traffic between all the different houses, we can actually simply allow traffic within each house and then rely on our default rule to deny traffic. It's a more positive uh, yes saying model here that we have in NSX T3.1. The one we're gonna really focus on uh, is Slytherin House and I'll let Victor uh, talk about that one. Yeah, so as Harrison said, our focus is going to be Slytherin House in this demo and example, which has been designated and isolated from the other houses. We want to allow traffic within this larger zone to attain a level of macro segmentation. First thing we want to do is to create a group that will include all of the servers in this zone. And as Harrison alluded, zone can be an application, can be a tenant as well. In our case, we have the Slytherin-House-All security group, which contains all workloads in the Slytherin house. Using that security group as the source and destination, we will create an environment rule that matches traffic between workloads within the Slytherin dash house dash all security group. As you can see in the table above, you'll notice that the action chosen is jump to application instead of allow or drop. This will send any traffic that matches this rule that is any traffic between Slytherin workloads to our more specific policy in the application rule set. So if you want to relate this and envision this in your mind, first is macro segmentation. Once that's achieved, second is micro segmentation. New feature in NSX 3.3.1, jump to application, comes very handy when you're thinking about macro segmentation and micro segmentation. We'll do the same thing for Hufflepuff and Gryffindor houses because my default role in the application rule set is set to deny. So I can be assured that the traffic between the different houses will be denied unless explicitly allowed. One thing I wanna highlight also here is when you're doing macro segmentation and using jump to application, you're also allowing to make sure the packet doesn't have to go through every single rule in application. So in the category application, if you had 100 rules, your packet doesn't have to go through all 100. It will jump to the specific section for your house or your tenant or your policy or your zone so that it gets to that, that section, go through the rules, allow, deny, and it will exit out of it. Now, this is the use case that we have identified. Our first use case is, as we described earlier, within each house, peers must have specific borrower policies. So in our case, anyone can access web server and Harrison is gonna show that in our demo as only web server can access app server over whitelisted ports, only app server can access database server over whitelisted port. Yeah, so here's here's exactly what Victor's talking about. We've got the intra-application rules for Slytherin House, got uh, client access rule uh, with any as the source, our destination is the Slytherin web servers, services are HTTP, HTTPS, We've got a web to app rule, and then we've got an app to DB rule um, over, over TCP port 3051. Again, our default rule is set to drop. So any traffic for Slytherin House not detailed in these rules should be implicitly dropped. So let's examine uh, what a flow from the Slytherin web server to the Slytherin DB server would look like before the jump to application feature was introduced in SXT 3.1. Remember, we do not have a rule that explicitly allows that uh, connectivity. Okay, so as you can see here, different houses, uh, different workloads associated with different houses, and they have the appropriate names, uh, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Slytherin. We've got our, our special Dumbledore allowance here that we talked about. And this is what you can see in, in, in vSphere. Uh, you can see that uh, Slytherin Web 01, which we'll be looking at here in a moment, um, is, uh, on ESXi host 01A. If we go into NSX um, and take a look at the distributed firewall policy section, uh, you can see that we've got um, some common services here um, uh, in the infrastructure category. So I'm, I'm putting, putting my common services like we talked about in the infrastructure category because I know that um, pretty much all of my um, uh, workloads are gonna need, these need access to these. 
Uh, so as an example, I've got DNS. Um, all of my workloads need access to the DNS server, of course. Uh, so I've allowed access to them. Now, um, I happen to also be uh, uh, using uh, SSH uh, to demo this environment here um, and to show this off as a lab. Maybe in a production environment, I'd want to limit SSH access as much as possible. Um, but in this case, I've only applied it to the Slytherin web servers. So it is limited to an, a certain extent here so that we can just demo this lab. But again, you know, policies like DNS, Act Directory, um, NTP services like that are going to be what you put in your infrastructure policy category. So let's move on to the environment um, category here. And you can see that uh, I've got Gryffindor policy here. Let's expand that. Hufflepuff house policy as well. Slytherin. And then, of course, Gryffindor to Dumbledore. So you can see that I, what I was talking about as far as these being um, all positive rules in that uh, Gryffindor to Gryffindor is a jump to application policy here, right? Hufflepuff to Hufflepuff, jump to application. Um, Slytherin to Slytherin, I've got this set to allow to show to show you what this was like prior to NSXT 3.1, and we'll get to that in a second. And then of course, I've got Gryffindor to Dumbledore, and then Dumbledore to, to Gryffindor, so that that special access uh, that we wanted to have set up is, is uh, allowed here. Notice that I don't have any rules that are saying Gryffindor House cannot talk to Hufflepuff House. And again, the reason for that is that I'm relying on my default deny rule to prevent that traffic from happening. And it won't happen with this setup. And if I go to my application tier, you know, I've got my um, in intra application rules uh, for each house. Uh, Slytherin House is the one we're going to be mostly focused on here. Uh, and you can see I've got my client access with the sources any destination is web servers. I've got my web to app, uh, and then I've got my app to DB. Again, there is no um, web to DB rule here. And that's that's the connectivity that we're going to be looking at. And just to show you what we've got here, we do have uh, the default rule set to drop. So any traffic not explicitly allowed here uh, will is expected to be dropped. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's take a look just to verify that our applications are working as expected. So I'll go to uh, Slytherin um, web app here, and you can see that that my application is working as expected. Um, Slytherin web two as well should also be uh, functional. Uh, so we can we can see that even with policy applied, uh, this is a published rule set. Um, that um, the applications are working as expected. So uh, let me return back to NSX here, um, back to the environment section and uh, focus on this Slytherin house all to Slytherin house all allow rule. Again, you know, the other houses, I've got them set to jump to application, which is the preferred action for environment rules in 3.1. And that's, that's the new feature. But let me show you what uh, what the difference is between how it worked prior to 3.1 and this new jump to application feature. Because the only action that was available before then was allow or drop, right? So I've got Slytherin house to Slytherin house, allow, allow all. Uh, and then I've got my policy in place for intra application in the application category. So let's take a look at um, Slytherin web 01 here. And I'm actually going to ping the DB server. So the DB server, I believe it's on uh, 172.16.30.11, right? Here you can see that. So that's, that's the IP address that I'm gonna ping. And you can see that the ping is successful, yet I don't have in my application section of my rule set, I, I'm not allowing uh, Slytherin uh, web to DB uh, service here. You can see I'm only allowing any to web, web to app, an app to DB. There's no explicit allow rule for web to DB traffic, and yet I'm still able to ping the DB server from the web server. You know, so an attacker could could use access, say, to the web server to then laterally migrate over to the DB server. That's a, a potential flaw here. So instead of having this set to allow, what I can do is have it set to jump to application. And I'll go ahead and publish this rule set here. As you can see, it's now jumped to application. And now if I run this ping from the Slytherin web server to the Slytherin DB server, I can no longer ping it. And that's because we're actually matching two rules 
uh, the flow is actually having to match two rules. That first one that's allowing access within the Slytherin domain, and then our more specific application policy where that rule is not actually defined. The traffic is being dropped as expected by the default uh, rule here. And just to verify too, that I can't ping from Slytherin to say Gryffindor, we'll um, uh, ping this one here, which is 10.0.1.11. And of course I can't ping it as expected. Even though I haven't explicitly denied that, that implicit um, deny at the bottom of the rule set there is performing its job as expected. Let's verify just to make sure that uh, we can still access this uh, application and we can. So the jump to application uh, feature uh, action had no effect on the application connectivity. So that's that's kind of the, the, the benefit of this jumped application feature. We're actually getting further to zero trust here uh, with this. Let me show you what this kind of looks like on the data plane. So we'll go to the host here. Run summarize DV filter. And I'm gonna locate uh, the Slytherin web since that's what I've been working with. You locate the slot two filter, uh, vsip, IOCTL, uh, get rules, dash F, and then the filter name that I just copied. And then you can see all the rules that are associated with um, with that workload, with the Slytherin web workload. Here's how we do the, uh, the different categories before you get to application. So you notice here that you've got your pre-filter rules, and then you've got your uh, filter rules, and it says app category. All your pre-filter rules here, these are your infrastructure rules, your emergency rules, uh, environment rules, right? You know, you can see I've got the Hogwarts DNS, Hogwarts SSH there as well um, for the infrastructure rules. But notice that, um, that for this one here, this is my environment rule where I've got the jump to application and I've got, this is my address set, which is actually representative of the Slytherin house all. You can see that that's the source and that's also the destination. And then of course, here's the action. So go to filter, jump to application looks like on the data plane. And that means it's going to jump immediately to this application filter here and to this rule set. So that's kind of how this works at the data plane level is that we have uh, two different filters, one for all those, for the emergency infrastructure and environment sections, and then another another distinct one for the application one. And layer two has its own as well, uh, but of course there you're dealing with MAC addresses uh, and at a different layer. Thank you very much, Harrison. That was a great overview. All of our listeners, audience, now you understand what is macro segmentation versus micro segmentation. Also, you can from here onwards start looking at jump to application feature in NSXT 3.1. Once again, thank you, Harrison, for showing us this great demo. Excellent. Thank you, Victor.